Welcome to Dara Walker's Coaches Show with your host, Ray Tucker. We're at the Jack Stevens Center. Welcome to Little Rock Coaches Show with Daryl Walker, head coach Daryl Walker. It has been a very bizarre college basketball season. Your team's been riddled by injuries and COVID all season long. Oh, along with a lot of other teams in, uh, in NCAA basketball right now. But uh, the team that we've been playing with and not, not making any excuses, Ray, it's just been tough. We don't have our guys out there. and We have so many guys hurt. So many guys have been ravaged by, by COVID. Uh, my staff has had COVID. It's just been an unbelievable year. It's worse than last year. Right now, you're two and two in conference play. There are teams in this league that have played as many as seven games. Uh, for the first time all season, you got two conference games in a week. You play Texas State and Texas Arlington. And we come back, we'll take a look at highlights. Sport builds us up. It strengthens our bodies. It strengthens our resolve. Sport teaches us lessons of grace or humility or humanity, and that we're far more powerful together, winning the hour or winning the year. We're winning our lives. We're winning our way. Because while a season is short, fierce is forever. It was a rarity for your Little Rock Trojans. You, you had to, uh, three games in a row cancel. Uh, you had back-to-back -back games at home, which, which is a rarity. Opened up against Texas State here at the Jack Stevens Center. Yeah, it was, uh, we had a two-game stretch with Texas State and UTA, and uh, Texas State was defending Sun Belt Conference Championship, and we knew it was going to be a tough basketball game, and it was. This is a very good Texas State basketball team, and our team, uh, not being negative here, we have a habit of not getting off to a good start. Well, every time we play this team, we either go on an eight or nine minute stretch where we don't score the basketball at all and they, they, take, they take off on a 10 to 13 uh, point run and usually get a lead. Uh, we didn't play well. The halftime the score is 43 to 24. Uh, we had our chance to win this basketball game, but they're a seasoned veteran team and that's why they won the Sun Belt last year. You've got some new additions to this team. You had Myron Gardner who didn't didn't play early in the year, uh, had had surgery from, from the get-go back in October. Uh, it was good to get him back. It was, it was just great to get a body back, to be honest about it, Ray. And, and Myron played pretty well, but he's still not in, in tip-top condition. Uh, this team was a seasoned basketball team, and, you know, we, we were able to stay in the game, but just couldn't pull it off. We didn't have enough bodies, to be honest about it. That was their little point guard, Harold, who is really, really good, one of the better guards in the conference. Well, I hope he's a senior because it seems like he's been, he's, <laughs> he's been at Texas State ever since I've been here. So it's about time for him to disappear. You know, I've got friends who are on the six-year plan, but they weren't basketball <laughs> players. <laughs> no, he's, he's a real – that's why he was first team all Sun Belt. Uh, he's a good, he's a really, really good point guard and runs their team. He's the head of the snake, and they're a good basketball team, and they're well coached. That was Myron Gardner, 6'7 transfer. Uh, started out with your friend Patrick um, Ewing at uh, Georgetown, later went to junior college route and missed a number of games here. Yeah, he's missed a number of games. He's just a talented freshman to me right now. He really doesn't know how to play. He doesn't know really what we're doing offensively and defensively. Right now, he's just doing things on God-given talent right now, Ray. D.J. Smith, the young man, a true freshman out of North Little Rock, played on the 7A state championship team a year ago. Well, he's, he's a winner. He knows how to play. And when you win championships, most of the time you're going to have good guards or a good point guard. And he's a really good point guard for us. You know, these, these guys made shots. They made it tough on us uh, offensively and defensively. Uh, in the second half, I thought we played so much better. We held them to 26 points and got 35, 35 points ourselves. But we had dug ourselves a big hole. At halftime, it was 43-24, so you, you were down, uh, what, 14, 16 points there. Yeah, well, you, and, you, and you can't get out-rebounded 42 to 20. I mean, they just pounded us on the glass because, look, we have five guards out there, and that's where it's been you know, the, the last three or four games. We basically had five guards out there playing, so it's been tough. The reason you had five guards is because of COVID issues and injuries. Uh, not many teams have seven Seven guys dressed up in warm-up suits like you're wearing right now. Warm-up suits sitting on the bench and having and not playing. No, when you when you take seven guys out and you take three or four starters off your basketball team, it's gonna be it's gonna be tough to win basketball game. That's no more than Eric Musselman taking Note and Jalen Williams off his team. They're gonna be a different basketball team. You take those two guys off the team. You're talking about taking four starters off my basketball team. So it's it's been tough for us. If you use uh, conference only numbers, uh, this game in particular. Um, Big Marco was out, Marco Lukic was out, Nicola March is out. Between those two in conference play, they're averaging about 36 points a game. You, you, take, you add 36 to the end of the game, that's a different game, right? <laughs> well, if you have those guys in there and they, they both just get to, you know, 10 or 12 apiece, those, those are points that you can count on. And we can't count on it. You can't take 36 points out of the lineup. And, and Nico was playing well and Marco was playing well. And, you know, you just can't. It's hard to overcome that. But I'm going to give my team some credit, Ray. I thought they played hard. I thought we got after it. We just didn't have enough. 
you you cut it to I think nine in this game uh, at one time, and the final score ended up being 69-59. But after the game, I came to your office and said, Coach, that was a gutsy performance yeah, by your was, team. It was a really gutsy performance. You talked about a bunch of guys on the bench over there with sweatsuits on. Uh, we, we, we just got killed on the glass. They're a big team. They're a physical basketball team. We just, you know, we just couldn't get over the hump. I mean, we tried. We played hard. We had our chance to really get back in it. We did for a second. Uh, we just kind of ran out of gas, to be honest about it. You had uh, three players in double figures. Myron Gardner ended up with 13. C.J. White, who's come on pretty strong, Coach, with 13. D.J. Smith with 10. Yeah, well, you, you, uh, I wish I had Nicole and Marco Lucas 15 or 12 points right there. You know, you add that on to the, to the 59 we got, maybe it's a different basketball game. But don't, don't take anything away from Texas Tech. I think they're a really good mm -hmm. basketball team. Very good basketball team. Final score in that one was 69-59. Uh, that, that was at the Jack Stevens Center. Game two on Saturday was against uh, te Texas Arlington. And we'll take a look at those highlights when we come back with more of the Darrell Walker Coaches Show. Step into the new when you drive a Chevy. It's time for a fresh approach and a new perspective. Meet new friends or reconnect with some old ones and find the Chevy that's right for you. Find new experiences, find new roads. Step into the new with a new Chevy. Very well-qualified buyers can get 0% financing on most Chevy vehicles. Plus, current competitive owners get an additional $750 bonus cash. See your Arkansas best Chevy dealer. Just 40 minutes from Little Rock at the Saracen, it's always fun. Craft, poker, slot machine, lots of money will be won. Come and win or come to eat, mama. Get the best steak you ever had. Game two, our Little Rock Trojans taking on Texas Arlington, a nice Sunbelt matchup on a Saturday Saturday afternoon, a 2 o'clock game. And your ball club this time got off to a very good start. Yeah, finally, we got off to a very good start. Uh, we, we made some shots. And when we make shots, sometimes that energizes us on the other end of the court, which it shouldn't be like that, Ray. But uh, I, I thought we played well. We moved the basketball. We had 21 assists in this basketball game, so that's a lot of, a lot of assists. We moved the ball, and, and we made shots. And we guarded, to be honest about it. We held them to – uh, you know, we held them to 26 points in the first half, so we, we, we were guarding. Number 20 just scored there, Kevin Osawi, who's, who came in here from Western Kentucky, very athletic player. Yeah, that, that was Jordan Jefferson making a shot out of the corner right there, young freshman from Atlanta right there. Boy, he got off to a rocky start in this game. He got three personal – and you, you're, you're short, short bench didn't even – Describe what you had. You had a really <laughs> short bench, and Jeff, uh, Jordan picks up three fouls in five minutes. Man, I, he picked up so many fouls so quick. It was, it was just unbelievable, man. We had to go to the bench, and we went to the, ditch, to the bench, and I thought DJ did a great job. That's Myron Gardner making a shot. Izell breaking on the ball right there. I thought Izell played pretty decent right there. He's played better. Uh, getting the putback right there. But this was an unbelievable basketball game. He better be glad he got the putback or he might have been on the bench with you after <laughs> after the way he handled that coming down no, the that floor. Was, that wasn't a good break right there. But no, he was it wasn't. able to convert on the offensive rebound and put it back in. That's CJ making the jump shot out of the corner. We shot the ball well, 16 for 31 from the three-point line. That's really good for us. That's great for us. That's good for anything, to be honest about it. That's a high number. You know, we, we may see a shot of your bench somewhere in here. And if we do, people will understand. That's D.J. Smith, the freshman out on, out on North Little Rock. He just, you know, he, he started – you started him earlier in right. the year, uh, sat him down and won, getting great minutes. And I don't know where he came from, but I promise you, on the scouting report, he, he was 2 of 19 on threes, and he lit it up on Saturday. Well, I don't think a lot of people know that his hand was – had been messed up early in the year. And I probably put him in the starting lineup too early, Ray, and I – I brought him to my office about three weeks ago and told him I was going to take him out the lineup and sit him down for a while and let him sit on the sideline and become a coach and, and, and just dissect the game. And he did a good job that. So when I went back to him, he was ready to play. And, I mean, did he ever play? He played great for us. He, he played like a senior coach. He did. He was, he was solid. He had a lot of poise. He made a lot of big plays down the stretch. As a matter of fact, I put the ball in his hands down the stretch. That's how much confidence I had in him. He defined what a point guard was supposed to be, a floor general down the stretch. No, he, he played well. Like I said, Ray, I put the ball in his hand down the stretch in a lot of pick-and-roll situations and told him to make the right decisions with the basketball, and, and, and he did that. He played big with 27 points, and uh, I was very happy for him because uh, when I set him on the bench, Ray, he practiced hard every day. He cheered for his teammates. He stayed connected. He was in the game whether he played or not. And when I went to him the game before this Texas State, I thought he played pretty good. And then this game, he just was over the top great for us. 
At the half, you were up nine. I went, yeah, we're up at the half. <laughs> we're usually down, you know that. Yeah, right? I know. That's why I said yeah, that. Most games, when they ain't down now, we're usually down 10 or 15 points, and it was good to be up. Uh, give them credit. They came back and got back in the basketball game. I thought we got a little soft ray when we got the lead in the second half. I could see us just getting soft and just trying to run the clock out instead of doing the things that we did to get the lead. We kind of backed away. That's Isaiah with a beautiful breakaway dunk right there. Good hustle play by Myron Gardner to save that and get it to Isaiah. Yeah, we, you know, we, we moved the basketball pretty good. I said with 21 assists. That's Jovan knocking down the three out the corner right there. So it was a really balanced game by our whole team, offensively and defensively. Now your biggest lead was 17, and at one point, you know, I'm doing the game radio, and I'm thinking maybe this thing looks like it may slip away from well, us. Well, it, it felt like it was a little bit because we, we got we got lack of their score and what we didn't do. We didn't do anything we did to get that lead in the second half, and that's why they got back in the basketball game. We got tight. We started throwing the basketball away, and then Azor just started making plays everywhere, and that's why I think he's the – he has a chance to be player of the year in the conference. And Bischoff, <laughs> number three, their, their guard. The second time this season, we he hit seven in a row. He ended up nine of 11 on threes and shot them right back into the game. Well, I can tell you the film session wasn't very good because out of all those threes, Ray, all six of them was all defensive lapses on our part to give him a wide open shot. And I pointed out uh, to my guys that you can't do that when you have a lead, especially a guy that can flat out shoot the basketball. You know, that is Levi, their, their point guard. There he is right there. That was a bad defensive assignment right there. Um, I mean, the guy. He can I, flat out shoot the basketball, man. I think I used the expression he can pour water in a swing and coke no, bottle. No, he can, he, can, he can shoot. He can really shoot. Beautiful pass right there by Myron uh, to Kevin. Uh, Myron, that's one thing he can do. He's an excellent pass, and he's an unselfish basketball player. This thing ended up 98-96 <laughs> uh, in tri triple overtime. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the overtime and reg regulation. We were in it. We were tied at 69, and so you went. To, you had to go to your bench, and at one juncture, um, you went to your bench, and you only had one player left. Um, <laughs> Terrell Curtis, who was a walk-on, been here for four years. Been here for four years. And came off the bench and ignited this team a a and the crowd. Uh, man, let me tell you something. We, we subbed TJ in, and uh, the ball was swung to TJ for, for a shot, and he jumped up and knocked the three down, and the bench went crazy and energized the crowd. And then he got a, we got an offensive rebound. They tipped it to him. He went in and laid, laid the ball up. And that was a quick five points that he gave us, and that really energized us, man. And we, we got after it. That was kind of like a basketball version of Rudy. <laughs> well, you kind of said that T.J. That was going to probably win the basketball game or, or at least get in the <laughs> basketball game. And that's how injured we are. We had a walk-on play major minutes in overtime and stepped up and made, made some great plays for us. I told athletic director George Lee at the half, he happened to stop by, and I said, just know that Terrell Curtis is going to be the star of the game. And let me tell you something, he was the star of the game. Uh, that's Myron making a beautiful shot right there on a one-on-one -on -one move with – we don't win that game without TJ, man. He, he, he really stepped up and played big for us. There's DJ Smith from long range. Uh, DJ was great, 27 points, and uh, made a lot of timely plays, man. Just really, really happy for this young man who had started and then went to the bench and back to playing again, man. He played great. He played great. But overall, I thought that uh, it was a good basketball game. I didn't know if the game was ever going to end. I thought we were going to run out of basketball players. I was really concerned about somebody else <laughs> fouling out. We were going to have four guys, right? And uh, uh, we were lucky to prevail. And I think I think DJ played with four persons. Had he four did. persons. He, he, he did, and he didn't foul out. If he would have fouled out, we'd have had four guys out there. You just that's what, one time you just saw a two-two zone. That's what you would have saw, right? And we had a game last year at Missouri State where we played four. We played four guys. So it's uh. It's been a struggle not to have, have your whole team out there, but you know we just we're, we're a pretty gutsy group, man. These guys are playing. We have good chemistry on this basketball team. Uh, that's that tip out, big play right there by TJ. They go in and get that layup. The bench is going crazy, as you can see. Everybody in the stands are going crazy, and that's how happy they are for uh, for TJ. I was happy for him too. Those were two big buckets for that, us. That was a special moment. Final score in that one in triple overtime. Trojans win at 98-96. Uh, we come back with more of the Darrell Walker Coaches Show. We'll take a look at the week ahead as we hit the road, head to Coastal Carolina and App State. It's time to expect more from yourself, from us, from the typical college experience. UA Litterock offers world-class programs, including business, computer science, criminal justice, cybersecurity, engineering, and nursing. But there's so much more. Expect to be amazed by state-of-the-art facilities. Expect to be challenged by motivated faculty. And expect a welcome place 
in the heart of Arkansas. University of Arkansas at Little Rock. It's that point in the conference play right now, Coach. You had two at home. Uh, prior to that, you were, we had one and one at, against Arkansas State, which got canceled. Right. We were at Louisiana, uh, made the Louisiana swing, played at Monroe, lost there, uh, had the game canceled against Louisiana. Now you head on the road, you make the East Coast swing is what we call it, and we will head out and, and take on – uh, take on the Coastal Carolina first and then App State. Yeah, uh, App State is really playing good basketball, and uh, Cliff Ellis has been there forever. This is his 15th season down there. We call him Uncle Cliff. They're a good, basket <laughs> they're a good basketball team. So uh, I told my team that we're going to take one game at a time, and I think we have a chance to win both games. But we're going to have to play a little bit better than when we played here. But if we play as hard as we played here, we take care of the basketball, we make some shots. We're going to be just fine on the road. With your short bench, do you change your style of play much? No, I just, I just try to make sure that we take care of the basketball. I try to play a little bit faster because teams are so much bigger than us. I try to push the ball up the court a little bit more so we can get a, a good shot maybe before they set up defensively because we're so small. But other than that, uh, I'm running the motion offense right now. You've never seen me run the motion no. offense <laughs> because we're so small. We don't have any post guys, so we're moving and cutting and screening and back screening, and it's been good for us. you got a good culture of the motion offense down on the floor that behind us, Coach Foley. You know, I also played for a guy that did it. And it was in the Hall of Fame by the name of Eddie Sutton. So when I was at the University of Arkansas, we ran the motion offense. That's all we ran was the motion offense. So uh, looking at Coach Foley and, and, and remembering what Coach Sutton taught me in the motion offense, I know how to run it. I know you play them one at a time. You're two and two in conference mm -hmm. play. So this is a big game for you if you can get above 500. Man, if we can get about 500, that, that'll be great, especially with the group that I have right now and so shorthanded that we are. And I've watched a lot of film on Coastal Carolina. No doubt about it. They're capable of beating us. But I feel good about going down that plane. If we can rebound the basketball and make shots, we've been guarding people, Ray. If we keep guarding, we have a chance. That's going to do it for this week's Daryl Walker Coaches Show. Hopefully next week we're talking about two road wins. And as Daryl says, we – Play them one at a time, Coastal Carolina, and then App State. You folks have a great rest of the week. We'll see you again next week.